Super Mobile. Welcome everybody to some new content of Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord on the series. We are going to be returning to an old favorite uh, on the channel. Hannah Kalia, the War Maids of Calradia are returning. It has been a long time since I played uh, Bannerlord on the channel. Uh, aside from the uh, Banner Kings mod uh, that we were playing with recently. For 500 let's, let's years, the Calradian Empire dominated the continent. Its armies scattered foes before them. The strongholds of proud tribes crumbled beneath its engines of war. From the forests of the north, to the wastes of the south. All was brought beneath the standard of their legions. Brutal as the conquest was, the wise agreed that it brought peace. The land, now untroubled by armies, grew rich. But empires, like men, grow old. Leaders lose a common cause. Corruption spreads. Old enemies learn the Empire's tricks and devise new ones of their own. Until one day, the bonds holding the Empire snap. Then comes the Civil War. Pitting all against all. A time of hatred. A time of suffering. But also, even in the worst hours, a time of courage and defiance. As new leaders arise, from new places and new peoples, to turn back the tides of destruction and bring forth a new world from the ashes of the old. Back at it. We're going to be making uh, the War Maids of Calradia return. Uh, as per the uh, wise request of our good friend uh, on the channel, Quirky. Thank you, Quirky, for the uh, feedback, for the suggestions, and for the fun, and all that support. We are going with Batanians. Let's read this up. There's a 50% less speed penalty and a 15% sight range bonus while in forests. Towns owned by Batanian rulers have one plus one militia production, which is quite nice. A 10% slower rate of town projects in settlements. So we build a little slower when upgrading our towns, but we get uh, better forest activity and more militia. I like that idea. Oh, 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 we're not that person. Well, that's that's uh, Hannah right there. Yes, absolutely. That's uh, that's Miss Hannah right there. Let's talk about her family. Uh, member of the Chieftain's Hearth gives us uh, vigor and uh, some two-hander and some bow. I'm not gonna actually go through all the options. I'm just gonna go through the picks that I take just to try to speed things along here. Um, let's say we do the, yeah, we'll do the tension to detail that gives us bow and uh, uh, athletics plus a control. Uh, the next option is about the childhood and this gives us, mm, we go with hunting, we could go with Let's actually go with sold products in the market, get a bit more social, some trade, and a bit of charm. We are going to do a lot of trade uh, early on to get a lot of monies. Uh, riding with the scouts gives us some riding ability, an extra endurance, and some more bow skill. That's three in that category. Um, biggest adventure achievement was um, escaping. No, no. Treating people well, quite good. Charm, a little more social. An extra point in stewardship, sounds good. Manhunt, maybe we could get, yeah, no, I think we'll do the treating people well. Treating people well is important, right, Quirky? That's very important. 
like many families in Calradia, and it goes through the loss of your parents and that your big brother here, or little brother, I don't know which one he is, he looks older than us, but I have good marches. She doesn't look particularly happy, but this is this is the story, part of her story where she shouldn't be looking particularly happy. Uh, but we get another trait, but it also prefaces the story that our little two siblings, our younger brother and sister, uh, and the older brother are all... Um, are, we, we, we gotta get them all back, so... Uh, let's see. Organized travel breakout. Um, it gives us social leadership and charm. Um, that's good. But I think we'll do the horse. Bit of scouting and some more endurance. Hmm. Where do we go with the social? I'm gonna wield a two-hander weapon and a bow on horseback. Uh, possibly also doing a, a decent amount of on-foot two-hander. Um, we'll go with the fast horse. It might actually get us a better horse as well. Uh, not Er... Ergion. That's a weird name for her. This is Hannah Kalia. There we go. She's one of those two names people. It's the only one in all of Batania, apparently. That is her trait. We are going with the normal warrior. There is, uh... There is a freebooter, warrior, and banner lord, and then a custom. We're gonna go with, uh, warrior. Uh, we do have, uh, enabled birth and aging. Uh, as well as hero deaths is possible. Uh, disable battle deaths for player hero. So Hannah's immortal. No, she's unkillable. Uh, but none, none of the rest of the people will be. Auto allocate member perks. No, I don't think so. That's that's fine as is. All right, so we're gonna get started. Sister, we're... It's been three days now. We've been it's tracking been those. Days. This looks like an old training. Are you sure about that? He sounds like somebody a YouTuber I know. All right then, let us split up and look for the little one separately. I'll send you a word if I find it before you do. You one really... other thing, sister. We want people to take us seriously. Who the heck we may is be leading that? men into battle soon. I Let's know give our the family a voice. name and a banner, Anyways, like the nobles do. Niacin is our brother, and uh, we can uh, skip all that tutorial stuff. Hit leave uh, notifications. A few hours after, we get in the Retsi's Folly Part 1. This is from the original tutorial. They still give it to you because you kind of need it. Uh, we're going to put our name as the War Maids. I'm sure the brother will love that. Uh, we're going to pick our sword. We can't do sword and wings like we have as our normal, but uh, sword and... Yes, the white sword because the blue isn't really an option. We can switch the colors. Now, the blue doesn't look good on the white. It looks mostly like a charcoal gray. We could go with... Hmm. We could go with white. Let's go with a big white banner. Let's increase the size of the sword, though. Because why not? Gigantic sword. Oh, it looks great. Look at that. That's amazing. I like that it's on a... They, put, they choose the weapon or the shield that you're going to use it with. That has like this uh, boldress or whatever it's called, the big giant metal piece in the middle, which means whatever sigil you put on there is going to be partially covered. <laughs> so that's fine. All right, it'll work. It'll look good on the flags, anyways. Uh, that is our colors and our banners and our things, and we're into the world. Here is our beautiful world, the Imperial, uh, the three Imperials, the West, the North, and the South, uh, are are you know kind of the. The rem remnants of the old Imperial, for those who are not familiar with it, as per the intro story that we got. On the east, we have the um, the Kujait, the Asarai in the south. The west is the Vlandians, and the north is uh, Sturgeon. Uh, Sturgeons are like a Nordic. Over here, we got like an East Asian style. Down here, we got like a um, Middle Eastern Arabic style of, you know, architecture and the, and the likes. The red Vlandians here are kind of a uh, Middle Ages, like Frankish, Gallic, uh, Gauls sort of thing. Maybe maybe French-ish, Spanish-ish in its uh, design. And then the uh, nation we are from, which is Britannia, which is a uh, of Celtic uh, design. Even the, even has little Celtic loops and the, the boar and, and the little swirls. It's amazing. All right, but we start the game. Uh, with a few things to do, like our first um, our first focus point. Every level we gain from here, gaining any experience in any of these, whatever this is, uh, 18 categories, uh, any experience gained doing any of these things adds to our experience. Each level up we get here gives us one focus point here to spend to at, fill up one of these little chevrons or one of these little bars. Um, 
and uh, every four turns we get an at or four levels we get an attribute points which would give us like more vigor control endurance um cunning social or intelligence i am going to blast through all the information tutorialish stuff as fast as i can because i want to get on to the good stuff um skills like bow when it's above a certain threshold will give us access to a perk in this case we've got the option to do bow control give the as a personal skill of 30 percent reduced accuracy penalty 30 percent less accuracy penalty while moving and then uh plus 30 percent the other option is dead head or de yeah dead uh, dead aim for headshots plus 30 percent damage when you headshot with a bow uh then the second of the two is a captain skill so that's if we are the captain over in an army and we're the captain of sorry in any party and we're the captain of an infantry or a cavalry or whatever that's when that comes into play uh, plus five percent damage with bows by troops in your formation, or um, more bow skill uh, for troops in the formation. I think I'll go with the uh, accuracy while moving. No, I think we're gonna go with the headshot and uh, the troop uh, skill overall skill. I'm gonna take this first focus point. We're gonna put it down into trade. So as what happens is if I uh, Hit this plus here. It uses up one of my focus. It adds another bar You can do a maximum of five per trade and the combination of that your current level and the learning limit, which is this green indication here. So we can get, our, we have a learning limit of 90. Doesn't mean we stop learning at that point. It just means we have a massive reduction to our actual XP gain in that category. So let's say we gain 10 points of experience in here. It's gonna be 57.5 points of experience that'll be added to this bar instead of the 10, because we've got uh, four in our social skill, which actually adds, uh, right, it adds three, 30 to the lim learning limit, which is anything above one, gives you an extra 10 learning limit. And then the, the rate also, anything above two gives you an extra um, learning rate here, as well as uh, focus points. You get um, one and a quarter for each focus point, plus a base of one and a quarter. So 5.75 times the XP that we gain in trade, is what our actual XP gain is. If it goes past this part, becomes harder to do, and so on. We want to focus in our trade. So that's the very, very, very blasted through quick rundown on that topic. Uh, we'll have different quests and things we'll do along the way. We have an Establish Your Clan quest, which we would have heard more about if we didn't skip through the tutorial. F totally fine with having done that. It saves us like 25 minutes. Basically a whole episode would have been wasted doing that. Increasing your dinar by 1,000. So we have to get to 2,000 on ha in hand. We have to have a party of at least 20. We have to have a clan tier of, of level 1, and we have to have hired a companion uh, of at least one of them. And then there's the Noretzi's Folly. We basically have to walk around and learn more about this this epic battle of Noretzi's Folly. Uh, the um, What happened in, I don't know what it was, like eight, seven or eight or nine or something like that years ago in game. Uh, we had talked to 10 nobles that were there and know something about it in the next, I don't know what it is, 10 years or something like that. 1680 days, whatever that is in the game terms. Uh, let's have a quick run over. We've seen the map. We zoom in and out. These bigger names, as we're zoomed all the way out, these uh, list names of cities or towns, I guess they're called. They're not cities. They're towns. These littler ones here are called villages. Every once in a while, you'll see like weird things like training camps or other things. Not really relevant. And then there's also over, uh, like over, whoa, hold on, like over here, we have a castle. A castle is mostly just think of it as a, a lord's home. And uh, there's some some perks that come with it, but it's also associated with settlements. So every village is either attached to a castle or it's attached to a city. Uh, if it's attached to a city directly, that's the city it trades to. It sends its trade goods and production there. If it's attached to a castle, it will send its trade goods. Like this one is uh, Onika is not going to go to Poros. These villagers belong to the Western Empire, not the Southern Empire. So they have to send their trade, as you can see in the pop-up, trade-bound settlement, Zeonica, over here in this town. So uh, if if this castle was taken out, uh, Onika would become part of, by the Southern Empire. If Onika switched to being, Onika Castle switched to being owned by Poros, then the, the associated villages would also swap and the trade would go that way. So that all matters later on. Uh, villages have uh, productions, specialty productions in certain areas. These guys make horses and sheep and pigs and salt and grain and clay and more horses and things like that. And we can uh, talk about all those as we get going 
uh, into that. We're going to head to Poros first and hopefully not find any nasty, horrible peoples other than that guy. If you please, probably nasty stop and horrible. there. I would ask you for your name. Hi, Farron. I am Hanakalia. You will know me soon. Um, he is... Uh, I think he can tell me about Nerezi's Folly. At least he can get me started on it. Were you there in Pendraic? No. Talk to Lucan. Got it. So he didn't count as one of the ten. But we will still have to find ten of them. He was just telling me which of his friends would be the right one to talk to. Oh, he does have a quest for us, but I don't think he would have a quest that's viable for us. The little blue icon indicates quests. Um, Stonehead Jespar here is a gang leader. She is owner of the Waterfront region in town. She owns the gang. She's the gang that owns the front. Um, the we also these are notables, various different notables in the town. If we click on here, there are different things like showing us the garrison, what the militia is, and any uh, lords that are visiting town. That swaps these two here. On the top left, we got the name of the place, a very wall levels, all the different uh, town related things. It's prosper, it's prosperity, it's food supplies, all this started jazz. Um, the more prosperous place is, it'll also dramatically improve trade. Uh, on the left, we've got the main interactions. We can actually go wandering around in towns. Uh, we might do that at some point for various different quests, but not for now. We can go to the keep, talk to any of the nobles that are in that keep, or the kings, or whatever. Uh, later on, but it's right now we're not cool enough for We gotta get our, our renown up for that. The arena is part of our renown plan. There's a whole bunch of things you can do in here. We are going to start by going into the arena and talk to this fine fellow to uh, introduce us to the concept of arenas. Basically, there's two things. We'll pra we'll do a little practice here, and uh, he can tell us about tournaments and practices and so on. Now, after we've done that first little blurb, as I just skipped through, we can either practice here, or we can... Um, uh, ask him about tournaments so he knows that of two tournaments going on in the city of Askar and the city of Sanala and so we could go to those places and probably get there in time to participate in the tournament for now let's look at the combat and we'll do a little practice we start in this particular oh my uh, in this particular design boom haha -ha, got him first shot hurt in the head this guy's hurling a oh right off the wall you see that Hi. Ooh, right in the face. Here, let me have that one that's in your knee. Hold on. That one there. No, 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 that one there. Hold on. That didn't work. I can, I can so, so be able to click on these. Okay. Fine. I'm going to club somebody. We've beaten yeah. one. We have 25 more opponents. He's trying to block me. Come on. Oh, I got to be faster. Oh, I blocked it. Aha. Hi. I just got clubbed through there. Oh. oh, I was just about to finish him with the, his bloody wreck, and then somebody speared me. There you go. Sure, we'll do it one more time. Hail Mary shot. <laughs> that was way too far away. All right. Well, I got a shield this time. That's helpful. You hold shift to... Uh, to crank my vision in. No, I'm not even getting anything on these. Way too far away. Hurl it high. Can I hurl it high? Oh, and high and accurate would be good. All right, never mind. Uh, as the progression continues, they more and more dudes spawn in various different spots around the map, which is basically what's going on there. Aha, gotcha. <laughs> we just ducked out of it. Come on, smash him. Oh yeah, I got a hit. Wasn't expecting that hit, but okay, I'll take it. There's an archer there, or arrows there. Picking up some, picking up some weapons. Oh, we can also do a spear, I suppose. Not really my best weapon of choice here. Spears. There you go. We we're equipped with four more javelins. There are 17 opponents still left. Die, filth! In the foot. Ah. 
<laughs> yes. Excellent. Let me see if I can switch to this blade. There we go. Sword instead. How's that? Uh, what's the condition of our shield? It's still great. Wow, we're doing we're doing silly lucky here. Mostly because everybody else is doing all the fighting. We only killed. Oh my gosh! Two, you spawned right at the wrong spot for me. Yes, excellent. Don't spawn behind. Me. Oh yes, two of them spawned. Oh no, no, that is not good. Not good. Oh my gosh, what is that weapon, dude? We do not want to be caught in the in the middle of all of this. Oh, that is some serious range. Ow! Behind me? No. <laughs> they ganged up on me. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the arena. Anyways, we got four people. Uh, they gave us five bucks for beating each other up. That was very kind of you. So we won't be doing those. We will do a bunch of tournaments throughout the course of things. It's really good for all the reasons. There is a tavern we can go to. One of the things we can do in taverns is find wanderers to potentially recruit. One of the rules we're going to do for this is at least for the early phases, the first chapters of the game before we become a giant kingdom. Um, the first chapters we're going to have, aside from family, the only uh, members, the wanderers we're going to be hiring are going to be uh, females. So we'll have we'll start building the war maids. Uh, we can go to trade, which is going to be a very frequent thing for us. We have one unit of grain to feed ourselves, and uh, lots of different things going on on the left here. We can do our our main unit, our main gear here. We can click on the little fancy uh, plumed hat, switch to our civilian gear. That's what we'd look like when we're running around in town. Uh, but this is our main one. On the top left is Poros. Lot top right is us and our party. It's going to show how much capacity we've got for cargo, how much money we have, that this is us, and these are the items we carry. On the left, 31,000 bucks or dinar in the production of this town. It does produce, it's got a, what does it produce? Um, it's got villages associated with it uh, that specialize in sheep, hogs, and uh, canterian chargers. And they've got a tannery, a velvet weaver, and a brewery. So a bunch of information available here. Our standard gear that we can carry, we'll be upgrading that. And then up here is like a filter system. So this is the everything, melee melee, and uh, melee weapons, sorry, ranged weapons and shields, armor, horses and saddles, and then miscellaneous or mostly trade items. So these are things that we want to be looking at for buying and selling. First thing I want to do, though, is look to see if there's a potential cheap horse. Uh, so the things we're looking for are horses that are actually going to be mounts for us. And that is this kind here. So if we look at the icon, uh, icons under the horse's name here is used for increasing speed. It says here, that's an actual mount up here. This is a pack animal used for carrying goods. We can ride one. In fact, we probably are yet. We're riding a sumter horse right now. If we take that out of our inventory, we don't have a horse. We're going to be walking around on the world map, which is a little slower, but uh, our carry capacity goes up by 100 points for each one of those horses we have. So let's look at the Midlands Palfrey here and buy that and then put the saddle back on. So we have proper mobility. There we go. Now we're riding an actual official proper riding horse. And we keep our Sumter horse with an extra 100 cargo capacity. So not bad. 750 bucks now to spend. Let's see if we can find ourselves some resources where the price seems reasonable. If it's a green price, it should, uh, when we mouse over it, if the price shows here is green, um, it shows a positive or, you know, uh, a, a less expensive item. This one is 90% more expensive than average. Over here, this one should be, it's near its average price. And there you go. There's one that's green. The date fruit, this is 2% cheaper than average. So barely, barely cheaper. Beer at 29% cheaper. I don't hate that idea, but there's a variety of items we can get. We can buy 24% uh, cheaper on the hardwood. This is basically how we're going to operate our trade early on before we get a proper caravan and other things to do it, but different resources that we can make a fairly hefty amount of money with. One other way to do this is that we could go to the exact... Oh, like the wine. We could go to the exact source of resources. So um, we could go to the town for for the um 
for the product. So if there was a place where iron ore is produced, we might be able to get it cheaper. But also, if you look at, for instance, hardwood, and we slide this bar, you notice the price is changing per item. In towns, they don't. If you go to a village, or not a town, in a village, they don't change. In towns, they do. So we're not, not much we can do here of uh, particular wealth, but we're down to 500 and some bucks. We did get some news about other towns that there might be things. We can also, in here, do uh, some recruiting, but apparently everybody's already picked through all the good things. We will not be participating in the trade, or the um, the smithing skills. Uh, smithing is, or was at last time I checked, was it was pretty broken financially. It takes a copious amount of time to do, and uh, but it ends up giving you like hyper super stupid awesome skills. So if people are more are interested in us doing that, maybe we can, maybe we can change that pattern. But for now, my goal is to work our way towards our home t home country, and see where that brings us. Let's head over to Onika, the little village of Onika. Now, if we look at these, it's going to now have trade rumors for some things. For instance, it knows that grain has recently, we've got recent news, so the text is fairly, it's the same as the words trade note, it's fairly bright text, saying that in Poros, we can sell this for 17 bucks. Grapes, we can sell for 42, and it'll we can buy them right now for 26. So that seems like a grand idea. However, if we get past 130 capacity, our speed down here in the bottom right is gonna start suffering from being overburdened. Right now, it's 1.6, nine lost to our speed to be overburdened with that but we're also 24 bucks short of being able to purchase that you cannot purchase more than you have there's no debt running in this otherwise i'd be in debt all the time in this game uh 546 dinar we can spend to get ourselves 21 uh 21 uh, 546 to get 21 grapes and we're just actually going to literally just turn around and head right back to Poros and see if we can get in without being attacked by looters. Yep. Easy peasy. Fastest, easiest money we'll ever make right there. So 760. And that is a profit made from buy low, sell high. Continuously do that. We're going to get ourselves skill points in trades. So we now have an extra 12. And the points that we gained was also, you know, was obviously multiplied by this number. So... We got, uh, we got two full levels. It said plus two in trade. That's not plus two experience. That's actually went from level 10 to level 12 now. So we got to get to level 25 to unlock our first perk. And that is going to be awesome. So now trade, we have 760 bucks again. We can maybe get more food stuffs. Wouldn't be a bad idea if foods are the right prices. But right now, they're just not. So, I mean, maybe we buy... We bought that wine... And it's a low price, so maybe it's worth it. But what does this one say for its... It's 17% below average. Yeah, you know, we'll buy we'll buy one of the silver. Or something like that. We'll buy... Five silver at 560... 565. Uh, five of them. I mean, I am writing this down. So... So we gotta, we gotta try to be semi-productive with our trade. Now we're gonna head back off this way. It's, oops, and see what we can glean for uh opportunity uh we're watching very carefully for uh aggressive potential targets uh these guys have cheese and grapes and grain now, again grapes could again be sold run back there but right now we are pretty much out of money <laughs> really expensive cheese that cheese is the same price as we paid for the silver or close to it uh, I'm not going to buy the grapes at this price, or am I? What is their, what's their average? They're 20% cheaper than average. So Poros is really paying hefty for the stuff. But uh, Zeonica has a quest of some sort. This is a uh, rival gang issues. No thanks. You can deal with your own rival gang issues. There we go. Now we've got the ability to get some recruits. We're going to get about 10 or 12 of these uh, recruits, these Imperial recruits, just to be able to have somebody to basically caravan guard for us. Uh, anything going on in the tavern? Doesn't look like it. And let's pop into trade, see if any of these are worth... Oh, look at that. That silver is super val valuable. Now, we spent five of them, so we'll get a th almost double our money off this. Um, 565. We were spending about 113 apiece. So, if we drop the price and it drops down to 100... See how, how it's... You know, we're, this first one we could sell for 273. 
Next one we sell for 237 and 212, 192, 171, and 165. So they're all profitable. Um, you know, both uh, actually this would be profitable as well. Oh no, it wouldn't. Sorry, we bought it at uh, we bought the wine at 202, so that would not be profitable. Jewelry for 1500. I think we need to go back to Poros because that's really good money. Same as leather, jewelry, leather, tools. We didn't know that these things were great prices because we had never been here. So, um, like, for instance, this uh, this is not saying that it's a high price. Really? That's not true. At $1,500, that is not cheaper than average. Now, it might, it might be registering some numbers that I don't know about. So there might be some crazy expensive volume of them somewhere. That's possible. Uh, the wool at 74 is uh, cheaper, and but we can buy it for 29 in Poros. Okay, we got to buy, find something to buy to take back to Poros. What can we take to Poros? Grain, um, 13 to 17, 22 to 42. Grapes would definitely still be profitable there. Meat is a little overpriced. So if I buy the grapes here, watch what happens to the price. It goes back up to 25. Now, we can't... That's still reasonable price for us uh but that is very heavy very burdening what about another sumter horse 310 do we have a we don't have a ish any issues with uh too much of a herd no we still don't have a herd uh herding penalty i think it's like three pack animal three animals that are not being ridden three maybe four until you start well let's check we get a herd penalty at this point? No. We're still not seeing a herding penalty. How many do we need before we can... Oh, there we go. That's now at a herding penalty. We lost the herding penalty already at that point. Really? That's news to me. For science, uh, we have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten animals there. And we start getting herding penalty when we have ten animals. That's crazy. I don't want all those Midlands palfreys. I also don't want all of these. Um, we'll go for a uh, three of the of those the uh, pack animals, and then we were buying grapes, right? Yes. Let's go ahead and uh, that should not be on there. There we go. Let's go ahead and keep buying grapes for twenty four. We're gonna go and sell them. Oops, too many. We run out of cash. There we go. We'll do that. Thirty seven of them for what amount? Uh, hold on. Let's take the other stuff and then go in here and then buy the grapes up to whatever cash we've got. We can have 37 of them for 845. So we're making money, right? That's this is good cash. Um yeah, basically we cashed in huge and we're getting great early cash with this trade. So we've got five um five teammates here. Four teammates, I should say. I'm going to go ahead and try to recruit a few others. If Oh, we don't have any cash. Never mind. Uh, if the castle, or if the village is associated with a castle, the um, if we mouse over the city or the village, it'll have a culture, which in this case is imperial. It uh, doesn't matter who owns it. It's um, It matters who, what culture it's originally from. Uh, talk it's to the leader of the army. Hi. Oh, you are... Are you able to tell me about Pendraic? No, this is the same guy we talked to before. Okay, sorry, man. I didn't expect it to be, like, the exact same dude. But he's clearly hanging out doing the same sort of things we are. Uh, artisan issues. Nope, nope, nope. We're here to trade. So let's do that. Uh, 41. The price is plummeting. Now down to 29. So we made some cash. We made another 400 bucks off that. Excellent. The wine is not going to be sold here, however. But we did see... We Now we got... We went between these two trade nodes now, so we've got some more information on what uh, might be profitable. It's saying that the price in these towns, you can buy some of the stuff for really cheap. However, stuff isn't there. That's the problem. It was like, hey, you could go buy some jewelry in, in Poros, and it'll sell here great. The price for jewelry here is low, but there is no actual stock. So that sucks. That really sucks, but we can get, we got more rumors, so we can get more details. The salt is 33% cheaper. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, buy the hardwood at 38, sell it in Zeonica for 77. Sounds like a good deal. That's 198 bucks. 
Okay, what else could we buy? Uh, clay would be a, yeah, eight bucks or so profit. The beer, um, yeah, we don't need it for ourselves. We could do the same sort of price point with cheese. Uh, and what else? Meat? No, not really great. 30, 37 isn't good. All right, so let's go with the cheese and the hardwood. Let's buy the five hardwood for 189 or 198 and let's see about cheese if we leave ourselves 200 bucks we can get all the cheese for 685 and what was the other thing hardwood okay we'll buy those as well leaving us 384 bucks i approve do we have any troops we can recruit sure do seven of them eight nine ten eleven let's get 12 people total that's fine don't think oh look at that we've gained skill and leadership now leading parties <laughs> we were leading a mighty army of 11 it's amazing uh so this town is connected to a castle which means it has a potential to these nobles some of the nobles in castle vill uh, connected villages will give you the elite soldier of their group so if i right click on the imperial recruits this is the recruit that gives you all your basic types he can be upgraded to the infantry side or the archery side and then um down from there to you know really good crossbowmen the um Michelariai, which is a light ca uh, light cavalry set um light i guess horse archers and then the their heavy archers here the imperial um pal uh, palatine guards they're quite good on this side this is like a um a a spear glaive sort of a fighter i guess it's not a glaive what does he wield he wields a pilum and a manavlion surprise um he it's a one-handed pole arm uh and a, and a sword but he doesn't have a shield so i usually go with like a legionary so that sort of thing but we're not training just those types because we also have each each faction not each faction each culture can produce an elite unit. This is the Imperial v Vigia, Vigla, Vigla recruits. Sure, that heads down to the Equite and the horse, um, heavy horsemen, and then on to the Imperial cataphracts and elite Imperial cataphracts. Look at this! Look at this bugger! Look how shiny and armor he is. That's amazing. Uh, but what happens is these guys cost a lot more. They're a higher tier unit. They take more. Uh, they're mu usually much more heavily armored and whatnot. They're just a more expensive version of things and they're the elites of that faction so that's kind of where that all sits now i think we're at about the point where i want to end each of these videos we're, we're not doing any any big edits through there might be a couple minutes of edits when i was like character creating and that sort of stuff but next episode we'll start in zeonica and we'll do our um our first we'll do some more trade and we'll do our first um actual battle in the arena for for a prize and get beat up by somebody that uh, that has themselves a name probably but we got uh, we got a few things to did i sell buy at poros right yes we bought these in poros so we're gonna go sell them here in zeonica but that'll be for next time thanks everybody so much for joining me if you do want to see more of this content please do uh check out the description down below you're going to find a link to playlists i put everything video that i do series on in playlists easy access for you to, to watch through them in in a binge fest they're very bingeable content that's my goal to make uh enjoyable informative bingeable gaming playthroughs and this one's going to be no uh, no different except for it's going to be even more fun we'll be playing as hannah and the war maids if you haven't seen the original one it's from a very much earlier version of uh, banner lords uh also in i think it was all vanilla uh, no mods uh this again is no mods but uh anyways all that aside thank you everybody so much for joining me thank you quirky for reminding me how fun this can be and uh for suggesting it as a series a uh, long time supporter of the channel so really Really appreciate chats with you and uh, communications and all that jazz and your support and the fun that we have when we get to decide silly things for our characters to do in live streams as well. So thanks, everybody. It looks like we're floating around with a white flag. That could be rather confusing. <laughs> I just realized we're like flagging, flying the white flag. We're, it, it's a very um, pure group of uh, totally honorable, pure warrior princesses yes that's it 
Okay, so they're going to do a lot of carnage and yelling and screaming and beheading people, I'm sure. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. Have yourselves a great rest of the day. See you in game.